what made you decide to want to do your own as opposed to franchising? I was always against franchising. Because for me, in the end, I'm not giving anyone 30% of yeah. my money. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to the Mo Show podcast. Um, we have someone special here tonight. Uh, Basma, Kefik. I'm very good, alhamdulillah. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. How are things going? Good. You've been traveling a lot. Huh? I've been traveling. It's like uh, everyone was sleeping and now everyone's awake. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> everyone wants everything now, now, now. Right now, now, now. You were in a plane yesterday and you're here today. You're probably flying out in a few days. I'm flying I'm out like, in two days. grab her while I, while I can. <laughs> How's everything going? Good, good. How's the family? Are the two little princesses? They are good. One will kill you if you call her a princess. Oh my god! <laughs> she's a she's a she's a rock star, a rock star, and the other one is definitely a princess. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, that's really good to hear. Um, just I'm not even going to like waste any time. I love your restaurant. It's my favorite in Jeddah, and I say it to a lot of people. And anyone who's watching, who knows me, call me out on this. If I'm not being honest, it's my favorite in Jeddah. I don't think we've ever seen anything like it here. It reminds me of one of my favorite restaurants out of Saudi. I won't mention it. Perhaps you have been inspired by it. You know what I love about it is that it's consistent. You know, like the temperature of the kale salad that I like with the goat cheese is always the same. You know, I'm never going to get it warm one day. So like mabalik. Uh, the quality of uh, of the pasta, which I love, and the escalope, which I love. You can tell I haven't had dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we should order so it. So <laughs> good, so good. Even even on takeout, by the way, it arrives just as fresh as. So if you don't see me in the restaurant, I'm I'm ordering to the house. You know, I was extremely against takeout. You we, were. We haven't. We only launched takeout uh, after Corona, uh, because I just the quality of food, you know, transported. Won't travel as. Won't travel as well as you'll have it. And I had this big, you know, conviction, no takeout. We'll create a takeout concept. Yeah. But then Corona came yeah. and changed it all. <laughs> and now we have takeout. It made you go where you didn't want to go before. Uh, a little bit of background on Besma. Jump in at any point if I get anything wrong. She owns and is behind a consulting firm that does food experiences, restaurant consultations, so if you want to open up a restaurant and you need to know, you know, your, your how to go about it, Basma is the right person to consult. Uh, she also does turnkey establishments in the culinary field, in addition to F&B and hospitality for boutique hotels, which is something that's up and coming in Saudi. Yes, it uh, is. I've been yes, seeing, you know, a couple boutique hotels coming up, which... It's quite exciting. It is. It is. Because we've always had the big, you know, uh, mainstream chains, never really the... London corporate, so, yeah, the corporate, corporate the hotels, yeah, business hotels. <clears throat> She's now working towards launching a unique Saudi food experience, catered to the West. Is it? Would you say, Western? I think it's uh, a concept that is easily exported. Okay, right. Um, that is going to translate Saudi food or our heritage in a way that is. Um, cross-cultural mm -hmm. so you can go and take this concept and plant it anywhere and it will do well mm -hmm. hopefully inshallah <laughs> we don't really have that huh well you see um cuisines that are big let's say like the lebanese um cuisine the chinese the japanese it's all when the actual people left their country and inhabited other countries and created a community then this food start the food scene starts growing and that's how you start exporting the food to other countries saudis have never left saudi yeah they're in saudi they'll go on a holiday but it's very rare that people create communities we yeah. stay in saudi we don't migrate yeah no fa yani taking the food and 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 making it you know something that is as consistent as Lebanese food or Chinese food or whatever, you have to translate it in a way where it's um, easily accepted by a wide range of palates. Yeah, yeah. And we love our food. We have some really unique and interesting dishes. The mentos, um, the 
my favorite Monday. Like, you know, the lamb, goat over rice for me is, you know, the ultimate cheat meal. We have a lot that we can, is kuna for us or is that Lebanese? So there's, so, so there's like this whole conversation that can go on for, for a very long time. Uh, when you say mantu, we've um, imported that. It's not really Saudi. Uh, Mandi again, I think because Saudi Arabia in a way is a melting pot. Um, we've inherited, let's say, cultures and cuisines and made them our own. Um, it's like, you know, the mulukhiya. Everyone's like, mulukhiya is Saudi. I'm like, actually, no, it's not. Egyptian. Uh, no, it's actually Turkish. Is it Turkish? Wow. Because it was called mulukhiya. They would feed it lil muluk. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, again, you get a lot of um, Eastern Europe, uh, we've imported their food also, the, the, the tamis, the mantu, the yagmush, all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Asian food, the akl al-jawi, here in Hijaz, is also very, uh, very prominent. Yeah. We, we have a lot, yani, uh, a lot of influence. We do indeed. Yeah. Um, the social kitchen, I mean, I want to get to the social kitchen in detail. My favorite restaurant in Saudi. Um, actually, maybe even more, it extends beyond Saudi. Um, but before you got in, before you started the social kitchen, it wasn't your first restaurant venture, was it? You were behind a cafe. Before that, I used to do catering. Catering. I used to do private events and okay. catering. Um, and that went really well until I feel I reached a point where I couldn't expand. Mm. Um, So if I would say book two or three events in the same day, it would be a problem if I wasn't present at all the events. So here it was about me more than the food. And I felt that that just defeated the purpose of growth. Um, So I stopped that. Then I opened a small little tiny cafe on top of a a really nice uh, boutique uh, and just did salads and sandwiches and desserts and pastries, no hot food. Um, And then, you know, I was testing, you know, the waters and seeing are people going to appreciate the food that I make and the kind of food I make. And um, yeah, they did. And um, I decided to build the restaurant and started working on that. And uh, when that happened, uh, I found out I was pregnant with my youngest. Uh, and that was a little bit of a surprise and also um, put the project on hold because I didn't want to launch the restaurant while giving birth and you know going through the pregnancy and understandable. Everything. Uh, then we opened the social kitchen. Hmm. Were there any uh, like apprehensions uh, in in launching the project of the social kitchen in terms of adoptability, acceptance? Will people come to it because uh, it's an upscale restaurant, um, and people in Saudi perhaps you know don't spend so much on food. Um, at that time, <laughs> not at that, anymore. At, at, at that time, I mean, yeah. you know, further down my bullet points here, I wanted to talk to you about how much the landscape has changed in the last five years. Um, the standards have gone up considerably. Um, so when I when I look at the social kitchen today, I place it, uh, you know, with, you know, top tier of restaurants in terms of quality and price point. Um, were there any worries that, um, you know, I... I might have trouble getting customers through the door or did you just believe from the beginning? I really, um, so when I built the social kitchen and when I started it, it was uh, a place I wanted to create to go and eat food I like and enjoy. And, you know, my, my market research was how many people like me, don't have a place to go out if they want to go out and have a good meal and just relax and have fun and meet friends and just, you know, being not in an uptight place, relaxed place, but eat really good quality food. Um, And there was a lot in Jeddah. Uh, But again, we were much smaller than now. We were 40 covers, only 40 seats. Um, You took next door, you doubled the size, right? I took three oh, of the I took three and then I took the last one and 
the, now I'm getting the one in the middle. Oh, you are. Because <laughs> the last time I'm like, wait, I don't remember it being this big. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we expanded. Um, and we took the mezzanine from another store to build a bigger kitchen to you know, increase capacity. I think they should give you the whole block at this rate. We are, we're taking the whole block. <laughs> <laughs> I really uh, took a, a keen interest. I love interior space, uh, especially in restaurants or retail. Um, I noticed that you really have an eye for the interiors, uh, the, the the copper utensils. Is that you or do you work with someone? So I work with someone, but I control a lot of it. Okay. Uh, the person that did the restaurant with me is Jawahir Marawi. She's a great uh, interior architect. Sure. Uh, but um, no, I, 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 I'm the kind of customer like, okay, this is the color palette. This is what's going to happen. This is what I want to do. Just what's in my head, please put it on plans and let's execute. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think uh, social media helped a lot sure. because I took the people with me on the journey of building this restaurant. You know, I, my daughter was uh, 19 days and I had her wrapped uh, in me and I'd film being on site, showing them what we're doing, showing people color palettes and what we're doing and, you know, kitchen selection. And then when we were doing menu tasting, so people were tuning in to see, you know, the involvement of this place. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Alhamdulillah, we've been very busy since we opened. Uh, you are right. Uh, when we opened, we were considered, um, you know, at a high price point. Uh, we have not changed our prices from when we opened until now. And today we are more affordable <laughs> comparing to other Compared restaurants. Certainly not the most expensive. No, um, no. You know, which, no but which with, is... with all the other um, international <clears throat> restaurants opening and all these pop-ups and, you know, price points, we're considered now... Yeah, fair, uh, fairly reasonable. Fairly yeah, reasonable, yeah. yeah. What made you decide to want to open your own? Uh, start from scratch A to Z as opposed to franchising. It's refreshing that you chose to do it your way. I feel like the easy way route uh, is for you know you to buy the franchise rights for a restaurant, something that you see it's so common in Saudi. Rarely do people start their own chain unless you're in the burger business, which it's mashallah taking off. But for you, what made you decide to want to do your own as opposed to franchising? Well, I was always against franchising. Mkasimi in the end. Bless you. 30%, I'm not giving anyone 30% of yeah. my money. Good That's one. one. Two, I know how to do it. I'm good at it, so why? Yeah. You know, and I always tell this to people. They're like, I want to buy a franchise. Why? Why give them, you know, from your top line, regardless, 30%. And you have a franchise fee. And you have to do, you know, you have to open five restaurants, let's say, within the next three years. It's going to keep cash injecting. Yeah, but, but why, why do that when we can? Yani Zaman, maybe, you know, in the 80s and early 90s, maybe we didn't have that skill set here. Mm -hmm. But today, no, we have excellent designers, very good, you know, professionals that know what they're doing. And I always say when, when you work with someone from here, I'm not here to make money and leave. I'm here to make money and keep this for me and for my society, for the people around me. You know, if I don't do a good job, it's going to be known. But if a, you know, a person comes from abroad and sells a franchise, he doesn't care if it does well or if it doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't understand the palette. He doesn't understand, he or she, of course, mm -hmm. doesn't understand what do we want. But yeah. Take someone from here to yeah. see it, uh, you know, succeed as much as it can. Yeah. Um, did you study food, culinary school? I took courses. I never went to culinary school. You never went to culinary school? Never went to culinary school. How about that? I've been in my mom's kitchen since I was 13. She was an excellent cook. Uh, my mom moved to Saudi Arabia when she was 17. Where is she from? Uh, she's Saudi, but she's lived in Germany with oh. her mother and my grandfather. They were living there. Mm -hmm. But when she married my dad, um, she really didn't have much. She didn't have a lot of friends. She had no friends, actually. Didn't speak the language. Uh, so all she did was, you know, get cookbooks and fill suitcases from Germany with ingredients. I swear to God, my mom would come with like, you know, <laughs> big blocks of cheese and... The produce there, don't get me started. Bread yeah. and you know, even flour. <laughs> She's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, my mom used to, used to make bread for us, uh, you know, 
she's, she's from, from scratch, huh? From scratch, yeah, yeah. So we grew up, you know, with food being the core of our house. Um, and uh, I remember once my, I think I was 14 or 15, and I told her my friends are coming over, and she's like, I'm not free. You go into the kitchen and you make some dinner. Oh, wow. And I'm like, really? Okay. And I made dinner and I loved it. And, you know, I've been in the kitchen since, always in the kitchen. And then um, when I wanted to study it, it was extremely unacceptable. You know, I, I went to school in the late 90s and univer- to the university and, uh, you know, saying, yeah, I want to go to culinary school. What? Do you want to get married? Do you want to cook for your husband? <laughs> you know, that was the whole. <laughs> that was people's you know. response. Huh? Yeah. And I'm like, no. And and I kind of put it in my brain also that what am I going to do with a culinary degree? You know, I can't work. Where am I going to work? You know, it was unimaginable in the 90s to be in this field. Um, and then shoya shoya until. Yeah. You found your passion. I mean, yeah. You know. I've reinvented myself so many times. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Just a quick thanks to one of our partners and we'll be right back to the show. We hear it all the time. You are what you eat. One of the reasons why we partnered up with Eska Basket. They were founded by Eska Farms on the principle that healthy food grown and cultivated locally and sustainably is an essential part of healthy living. So Eska Basket has these four pillars, which they take a great deal of pride in. Quality, clean and fresh produce, environment, seasonality and locality, fair trade, ethics and fair treatment. And finally, empowerment, transparency and support. So this is what the homepage looks like. It's super user friendly. It took me about three minutes to sign up. You've got these four simple steps to follow to see your order through. And now for the fun part, start shopping. As I touched on earlier, everything is super user friendly. Within just a few clicks, you have put together your basket that is fresh from harvest. Um, I read something recently. If if you need a degree to do it, it's not going to make you rich or happy. No. You know, you follow your passion and uh, it won't feel like work. Although some days it might feel like work for you. But, you, you know, I, I've, I've had this big complex, mm. right? That I don't have a degree in culinary arts, right? And everyone's like, you cook better than a lot of chefs. Sweet. And like, you know, and I'm like, but still, you know, I had this. I don't have the degree. I don't have the degree. I can't do it. That's why I always, I always start very small when I test a product. Start very small to see, mm, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Even though I know it's bulletproof, but you know, عقدت no degree. For sure. Yeah. yeah. When you do launch a dish or a product, um, what's the success rate in like 90%, 80% of the time those dishes go live? Maybe more. Maybe more. Sometimes I would without uh, a degree, huh? Okay, so so the idea is, um, first of all, I don't work on my own. Always, I, I I collaborate. I pick people's brains. I have like a consortium of people that I feed stuff to, and like I read faces and I read responses and body language and how they react to something can mm. tell me. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should do this. It's maybe like I should add group. that. Oh yeah, definitely. Interesting. And you know, I. I but I whenever have... you need. Uh, <laughs> just don't worry. In case someone drops out, Anna. <laughs> don't worry. But no, even I, I work some with some really super super chefs. Like, uh, um, I'm I'm blessed to have really cool people around me. Fantastic. I mean, you're only as good as the team you keep, mashallah. Yeah, and yeah. No, I have a super, super team. Hagigi, hagigi. I, I, yani, I trust them 100%. Uh, they're like family. Yeah. You know, we we are like we are a family. We have we're a family restaurant, and we run it like a family. Yeah. Even the guests that come into the doors, we always know who they are, what they like. You know, 80% of my customers are reoccurring customers. 80, 20. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, I, I feel, I mean, the vibe, whenever I'm there, the vibe, you can tell that, uh, A, uh, the employees, they enjoy being there. You know, the communication, I see, I notice these things, I'm very observant. And the, the, the customers there, you know, they are just happy to be there. It just takes them to where they want to be. Now, company culture is very important, Andy, you know, and, and, and the team. And, you know, if they're not happy, nothing will work out. You know, even if, you know, it's, it's, it's computerized, mm. 
if the person serving you isn't happy to be there, you feel it. is uncomfortable, is living in an environment that's not really nice. You know, I, I, I try to make my best to make sure they live in a nice environment, they have nice breaks, they're not overworked, right? They're, they're compensated for extra time, um, appreciated. And not everyone wants the same kind of appreciation because someone needs a financial um, boost, someone needs a pat on the back, mm-hmm. someone needs recognition in front of other people. You know, you have to know your team. You do, you do. And, uh, and it's actually a, a major point uh, that you bring up because most laborers, you know, in the Gulf region aren't treated that well. No, they're uh, not. Whether it's, uh, you know, where they live, um, being paid on time, how they're treated at, at work. Um, and it's uh, it's something that I wish people like in the restaurant business could, you know, lead by your example in, in how they treat those who, who work under him and work uh, work for them. I, I really think of them as family, and, he, and I always joke with the team, and you know, I talk Filipino with the Filipinos, I talk, uh, I change my accent with the, the you know, uh, the other Arabic uh, people working with us. I'm Lebanese sometimes, I'm Egyptian sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, you have multiple hats. I, you know, it's, yeah. it, you, you always have to have a, mm. you know, an easy, lucky, happy go kind True. of approach True. or else really, you know, we're there all the time. We spend all our time together. If we don't like each other, it's not going to be no, nice. No, absolutely not. What inspired the bakery that you opened, I want to say two years ago? No, we opened in February. Was it just this February? We tried to open wow. it before. I've been going too much. <laughs> it feels like two years. <laughs> No, we've had the bakery ready to launch at the end of 2019. Okay. But then Corona hit Mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, no, not now. And then, uh, yeah, we have to, we can't, we're just spending when, uh, uh, uh. Um, Actually, my head baker, uh, Hamza, was telling me that he just finished the year and I'm like, what? Have we been, have we been working for a year? Really? Oh my God, it went so fast. Um, but yeah, um, we we went we wanted to open, wanted to open again. You know, I love pastries. I love bread, and I want real bread. I'm just sick of that frozen stuff. Oh, I can't have that processed food. Those yeah. ingredients that taste like blah. Horrific. You know, it's like you're eating a sponge. Yeah. True. And I'm like, why, why, yeah. why? Yeah. You know, because you you go when, you know, if you're in London or Paris, you know, you go, you just, you can be walking on the street and you'd smell it before you see it, like a, a place I'm, that's big. I'm part German, so. You know what I'm talking A German bakerai is, you know, that's it. The German bread, and we have proper German bread. Okay. Or else my grandma won't have it. No, she probably won't. <laughs> she won't have it. But there's nothing like it, huh? Like some sourdough bread. Or yeah, Schwarzbrot, black bread and dry and, wow. you know, it's just eating good food. You know, people say bread is bad for you. A lot of anything is bad for you. True. But having bread that doesn't have any chemicals or food or taste enhancers or, you know, it's not bad for you no. if you have a little bit of it. Yeah, if it's done it the right way. It makes you happy. True, absolutely. You mentioned, I was actually uh, watching a clip of you yesterday and uh, it, it was an event for a electronics company. It looked like a TED talk, mm-hmm. really enjoyed it. Um, so you talked about how, you know, in life, we have a million options. And, you know, when it comes to university, we have to choose what field of study we want to we want to study. And that bothers the hell out of me, too. You know, yeah. like why commit to one thing? And we have to like, what are you studying in you know, political science? What are you studying accounting? Like, why does it have to be one thing? Is this something that irked you from a younger age? Like when you saw it, it bothered you going to university? <sighs> Okay, so in high school, I was shit. Mm -hmm. Can I say shit? Sure can. (laughs) I was really bad. Mm. Um, I never identified with what we were studying. I was really bad. I was just there to pass. Um, I went to a very typical Saudi school. Um, No extracurriculars, no arts program whatsoever. And I'm an extremely creative person. I felt frustrated and unhappy. Um, And then when I went to university, it was like a candy shop, right? I wanted to do everything. Um, I remember my father was very, very 
specific about you need to study something that you can live off later. You can't do something that doesn't make sense. I started first with education. I wanted to teach kids. And then, you know, in, in America, it's so painful. You can't touch them. You can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, you can't go close. Or, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do this. Then I was like, okay, let's look at business. And then the numbers were like, oh, no. Then I was like, okay, business with a focus on marketing. And I studied marketing. And then I got into an arts program. And I just found myself in art. Uh, you know, I studied art history and I did art studio and I painted. I used to paint when I was much younger. Um, and I really wanted to get into that. But then I was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Again, I, I'm a person that jumps from one thing to the other. Um, but you found your you found your house. Now, now alhamdulillah, yeah. at last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my 30s, yeah, yes. But but I mean, you some of the, the most successful people in the world have built what they've built in their 40s. I mean, yeah. Steve Jobs was in his 40s when Apple took off in 2000. Right, So right. we're still young. No, we are, we are. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I, You never I, know, maybe in, when you're 40s, you'll do something that really defines you even more than the culinary. Well, I am 41, are so. You? Mashallah, you look uh, yeah. a lot younger than that. Um, but no, but in my 30s, yeah, I, I, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Yeah. This is what makes me happy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, you know, you know that this is it when you spend 16, 17, 18 hours standing and, you know, sweating and then going to bed and then waking up and then going again and doing it over and over again. Mm. There's pain, but you're enjoying it um, and you look forward to what's coming next. Um, yeah, you know, you know, you, you know, we've reached home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you found what you've been wanting to. Well, you 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 found what you were meant to do. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, social space. I remember you doing something called the social space. What is that? So the social space was a project I started with my sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, it was what they have now, like events and events space. Uh, we wanted to launch uh, a space that people can use for personal events, for launching brands, because it, it wasn't available. Yeah. I'm I'm the kind of entrepreneur that, okay, let's see what's missing in the market and do it. Do that. Let's try that. Um, but then, um, again, they do, uh, they do jewelry and they have their own business. I have my own business. And then we started this project, not knowing how much time, you know, it will take from all of us. And then I found myself doing a lot of work for very, very little return. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, yeah, let's just break even and just close call it, it down, call it, call it a day. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to do this. I'm not happy doing this. The numbers didn't make sense. It didn't It didn't make sense, you know, for the amount of effort yeah. I put into it and the timing and the planning and... The... But a lot of learnings, surely. I learned a lot. First of all, partner with people you can work with. My sisters and I, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to kill me when they hear this. Should but, we edit it out? <laughs> no, no, keep it. <laughs> no, it's it, we we come from totally different backgrounds. I'm an extreme meticulous. meticulous person. I don't care how much I need to spend. It just needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It needs to look good. Nothing can be meshi mm -hmm. Um And my sister's is a number you know, I'm not going to say who you are, but she is uh, an extreme numbers person. And my other sister is also creative, but she she wasn't here as much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, I don't think your current businesses would be where they are without that experience. Yeah, so there's no such thing as a bad experience. No, I, I think that experience taught me focus on what you're good at. Yeah. Yani, and a genie opportunities let's say at least once a month, why not invest in this? Why not get into this? Mm. I only Absolutely. do what I'm good at oh, and gosh. what I know 100%. I can do 100%. I don't want to do 30 things at 20%. No. No, I want to be really good at what I do. I want to be the best at what I do. And um, everything else, yeah, I don't have sure. to do it all. Yeah. I had a friend of mine actually come to me a couple of days ago. You, did you see this opportunity I told you to take? We've made 300%. I'm like, halal alaykum. Good for you. But really, something I don't understand or I don't get, I'm not going to get into. Yeah. It reminds me actually of a quote uh, Tim Ferriss said. 
um, take advantage of your strengths. You know, don't work on your weaknesses. All my life, I've been like trying to work on my weaknesses. My Arabic wasn't hundred percent, so I'm like, me working my Arabic. I'm glad I did. But the moment you start working on your weaknesses, they might be as good as your strengths, um, and then you you kind of don't really have any anything that you're incredible at. But you know, taking full advantage of your strengths will take you places. It's what I've so the strength assessment is something I just started um, in in my company. So we've taken um, everyone in the company has gone through a test. Uh, it's called the strength assessment test. It's a test done by a company. I'm not going to say who it is, so it's not a plug for them. Uh, but again, you work on your top ten strengths and you see how you can accentuate these yep. strengths and make them work for you better. Uh, and sometimes you see your strength and you see where you are and what you're doing and the job you're doing. And then you realize, yeah, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing something that I can use this or this or that for. And you can't imagine how much the whole team loved this experience. You know, we've done the the company chart and where everyone should be and the top 10 strengths of everyone and how power of two works. It's 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 very important to know what you're good at and to know your strengths. It showed them, it gave them an indication as to what they're good at. And some people quit and some people went to try another department wow. and some people said, you know what this and, and you know, we've had a very, very good coach with us. And this coach was telling us um, you should like one of somebody, one, one of our team, she's uh, she was in a position where she needed to be vocal and outstand, uh, you know, outspoken, outspoken and you do a lot of things that were making her uncomfortable. And she was saying, let me push myself but you won't be happy this way. You should do a job where you're focusing, maybe data analysis, maybe more uh, research, that kind of thing. And that shift in job changed her mood and her output and productivity 100%. I've seen that, yeah, I've seen that before. It's crazy. Someone really good in sales, uh, you know, shifted to my department marketing and he was horrific in it. Sent him back to sales, you know, he's back to being employee of the month. Yeah, um, yeah, and I yeah. think it's important to find, you know, what it is that 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 makes you tick, yeah. and really what's work your at drive? Opt- optimal. What's your drive? Right, right. And when you find that, you will not feel like it's work as much as you would feel like it's work if you're doing something that you're not good. Um, yeah, yeah. And then feeling every time, oh, why can't I get why this I done? Why can't I get it done? Yeah. I mean, this tool really is is life changing. Incredible. Um, and you know, overnight I, indicator. I you know when when you read your. <laughs> <laughs> when I read my strength profile and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, that explains a lot. <laughs> you, know? you laugh at it almost. I, I, because in the beginning I was like, yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. is me. <laughs> that, that's, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> um, expansion plans. Are you looking to spread the, uh, the social bakery kitchen? Yes. Definitely. Across Saudi Definitely. And maybe beyond Saudi's borders? Um, that is also in the plans, in the books. Uh, Riyadh is our next. Uh, yeah, it better be. It should be. But Tarif has a Zika and I'm like, it's like jinxed. Every time we get right to the, okay, this is the place, then it's like, okay, no. Um, Falls through. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen, or I'm not comfortable, or, or something. But. Because you want it to be perfect. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. <laughs> just open, please. Yes, inshallah. Take care of itself. Inshallah, inshallah. But that's, that's nice. That's nice. Um, Dubai, uh, no. Qatar competition mm. is I don't think saturated. Com- I don't think uh, we're the right fit for that environment. I think, you know, maybe other countries. Okay. I'll, I'll watch this space. Inshallah. Any restaurants out there, Basma, that inspired you, you know, growing up, that made you think that, yes, I would like to incorporate that in the social kitchen? Um, I find that restaurants inspire me all the time. Because we're not a franchise, Mm -hmm. I'm free to do whatever I want. So um, even our look and our change, like, 
obviously I've created a brand, a brand manual and this is how I want it to look. But I do, let's say the brick is, is very, you know, London for me, the brick walls. So I brought that. And for me, having something green and a tree inside is also very important. Um, Use you, of copper. Copper. Definitely, but it's it's a little bit bits from everywhere, right? Even the menu, yeah. it's me going around. Yeah, okay, I like this dish in this restaurant. I'm gonna have it, my style. But this is what I want to eat. Again, it's like food I miss, and I want to have, so I put it on the menu. The flexibility you have by doing whatever the hell you want to do, yeah. and not having to have to stick with whatever the franchisee tells you you have to stick with. Absolutely, absolutely, it's liberating. It's, huh? it's, it's so cool, and you know. One day we decide we're going to go all vegan. One day we decide we want to do whatever. Yeah. Right? And and people are game. They want to like try new things. and um, But they actually get upset when you remove things from the menu. <laughs> I'm like, it's not selling. You're the only one that likes this. And me. <laughs> you open through prayer times now? Yes. 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 We turn off the music, of course, in mm-hmm. prayer times, but we're open. Functions uh, yeah. as is. I like that uh, deregulation, let's yeah. call it. You know, I, I, my restaurant was one of the first restaurants that opened that had only one door. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do two doors. Why when, do you need two doors? <laughs> there used to be Female. a ma- family door uh, and a course, male door. Of and I'm like, I'm a restaurant <clears throat> that's 100 meters. Why would I have two, two doors? doors yeah. I won't do it. They're like, you have to. I'm like, I won't do it. But I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then they're like, you can't work in the kitchen. I'm like, it's my restaurant. I'm going to work. Did in anyone the kitchen. come knocking saying, hey, you need two doors? Mm, once. Okay. I'm like, where's the law that says that? Mm-hmm. There's no law. Uh, honestly, something that really caught my attention is uh, just how much the industry has flourished yeah. in the last 10 years. The quality of restaurants, we didn't have what we have today, 10 years ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah. Is it social media? Is social media the reason why people are going out more, people are finding out about gems? I think um, there's there. this is a multifaceted approach to opening the country up, right? Yep. Uh, bringing in all these brands through the seasons, Masalan, has exposed people to restaurants they've never heard of or have never been to. Um, People travel more. Uh, Social media is opening up a lot. Uh, You know, when I first started with social media, it was, oh my God, she's taking pictures with no head cover and she's talking in her living room with her family around her. It was unaccepted. Uh, I've seen seen way worse out there these days oh, now it's crazy but when i first started i had people threatening me right My goodness uh, we're gonna come you are ruining our daughters i'm like what what <laughs> what am i doing i'm talking about food and family and kids i'm wow. not i don't talk about fashion or mm. makeup or any of that stuff yeah. right there was some resistance um, oh yeah and yeah. when when i first started yeah mm. yeah it's 11, like a, 12, 11 years ago. It's like a, it's like a new culture, you it's know. It's totally. Uh, sometimes I see these people on social media. I'm like, oh wow, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> like, and okay. then it's normal the next time you see it's it. It's normalized. It's been normalized. Yeah. Yeah, truly, truly. What do you do for fun? What are your hobbies when you're not in the restaurant? I just like to chill. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <Really? laughs> I like to be by the water, mostly tra- by the beach. You travel? You said you like Egypt. I travel a lot. I love Egypt. Um, I I just like to go somewhere and be um, with the people. Yeah, just submerged. Just khalas, you know, become anonymous. Nobody knows you. You don't know anyone. You know, this job is very hard because, you know, every day I go into the restaurant or every other day and then I see people, I have to smile, I have to talk to everyone. You know, you always have to be in a good mood. Um, it's, it's, hard. It's, it's hard. And then, you know, the other work also, you have a lot of clients, they have a lot of expectations and then there are the kids and then there's the house and then there's the family. And sometimes you're just like, I don't do anything. You know, I have a friend of mine this weekend and and, and they were like, um, let's go hiking. I'm like, no. I'm just going to stay in bed. Can I just stay in bed and do nothing, please? <laughs> My kids are going to go to the beach. I'm going to stay in bed. <laughs> You're really looking forward to it. Yes. It's almost like a politician, you know? You're like in front of the cameras. You have to say the right thing, do the right thing, show up. 
consistently. You have to show up. It's yeah. daunting. Yeah. But that's that's what it takes to run an establishment that you are running. Yeah. You know, the owner there every day. Yeah. Um, Egypt. 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 Ah, well, I fell in love when I moved there. I was living there uh, 2010 okay. to around 2013. Cairo, in the middle of it? Cairo and Zamalek. Wow, that's yeah. the heart of it all. I, You know, I've made friends that I speak to every single day of my life. Amazing. Um, real, really genuine people. Yep. And, you know, they embraced me and took me in and my family and showed us the ropes. Uh, sh- showed <laughs> they showed us where to buy our meat from, where to buy the vegetable from, who's the best grocer, what to do, what you know. It was it was really cool. Um, I learned a lot about myself also there. So um, they're a happy bunch, the Egyptians. They're happy go lucky. Yeah, definitely. And I always say, I mean, look at you know the, the circumstances that they live around. Circumstances, and they're happy yeah. and they're smiling. It takes a lot out of you. Cairo, it's it's you feel if the you're density. not used to it, yeah, you become desensitized when you live there. I think um, it's like when I first went to Beirut, first time ever, all I saw was the bullets in the buildings. buildings yeah, That's yeah. all I saw, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, it's, oh my god. you can't unsee oh it. My yeah. god. Oh my god. But then after a while, you don't see them, right? After yeah. the third, fourth time, fifth time, you're there, you don't see it. Desensitized. Yeah, and methylene for us, you know, the sound of the of the of the horns on the street in Cairo. <laughs> It, you you can't it's you an orchestra. Can't, yes, it doesn't stop. It does. Why are they doing it? It doesn't it's stop. Unbelievable. But they don't hear it. <laughs> Wallahi alaikum. They don't hear it, um, and they're not bothered by it. Yeah. I have a friend of mine. I was talking to the other day, and we were talking about Corona times. He's like, you couldn't he- hear any um, wow. horns, and it was daunting. They're like, oh. It's like it must have been the first time since they built the pyramids that there, was, <laughs> there was no horns. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Like I'd go on the balcony for some fresh air. I hear an yeah, orchestra, yeah. like yeah, Sixth yeah. Symphony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If not a wedding. It's fantastic. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's character. It has character. It does. You know, you just got to go in there, blend in, be carefree the way they are. And it's amazing. Um, so two girls, you said. Yeah, I have you two know. daughters. Yeah, Lena so. is going to be 14. One princess and the other is a rock star. She's a guitar player. She Mashallah. plays the electric guitar. Amazing. She sings. She plays the piano. Um, yeah, Lena uh, is our creative person in the family. She's a teenager now? She's, She's going to be 14, 14 in March. Mashallah. Yeah. A managing family, girls, restaurant, travel. How do you do that? I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it, hard. It's it, hard. Uh, it's a lot. But I have a lot of help. Uh, you know, um, family and my daughter's nanny is seriously a godsend. Without her, I wouldn't yeah. do anything. Um, you know, their dad helps out too. So it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Not easy. No. For sure. But nothing is easy in life, is there? Do people come up to you in the restaurant uh, asking you for advice, like uh, wanting to get into the restaurant business? Um, I have a lot of people not in the restaurant. They they contact me. They send me an email. Or they call me or they you know text. Actually, now I remembered somebody called and I should call him back. <laughs> um, You're welcome, whoever that is. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, that was you. I, I made her call you back. Um, but yeah, they ask and and I give I give my advice freely, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, it, it's not something you just do. It's not something you do on a whim. It's it's a lifelong commitment, um, and it's 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 hard. Could imagine. Um, well, thanks, Basma. Well, welcome. <laughs> I uh, I uh, got through what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation. It was very like conversational, which. Uh, is something that uh, I, I I really appreciated. Um, is there something that you want to add? Is there something you want to leave us with before we say goodbye to you? Mm. I think we got I think we got everything out of you. I as think much as we so. Could. We talked, and <laughs> I'm happy we talked before. Yeah. So that didn't come out here because <laughs> <laughs> that didn't need to come here. Well, the cameras were rolling, so you oh, never know. Oh God. <laughs> 
Well, look, thanks. Please, we're, no. We're, we're going to be we're going to be watching you and your moves and your expansion plans in Riyadh and maybe further, inshallah. I'm not the only person who's a big fan of what you've done. We're actually working on a really, really nice concept. Uh, hopefully, hopefully to be launched uh, in Billet. Oh, very, very nice. Soon. Yeah. Okay. There's 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 an there's a season there happening, right? Is there? Uh, there's Hayat Tatwir al Billet. Yes. And then there's a lot of things happening in that area. Okay. Uh, and inshallah, yani, I think it's a beautiful, that part beautiful of part of town that really needs, if we can sort out parking, we'll yep. be fine. <laughs> yep, yep, truly. You always feel like old town, like uh, I've been to Mallorca and I went to the old town. It was the nicest part of town. Yeah. You know, the, the areas where it, you really feel the history, the heritage of that town is way more attractive than the new sky rise you know what they're doing in Belad is so heartwarming yeah already it's changed a lot in in the last 10 years it's gorgeous it's beautiful i've been to a few of the projects uh we've done um two two restaurants uh in the in jeddah season okay in Belad they were gorgeous uh it was so nice to be in you know these historical buildings and have a great meal listen to nice music uh, you know, it's just it's just beautiful. It's think... unheard of, right? To think that you'd be able to have uh, the kind of meal that you can have now in Bella ten years ago. It was run down. Ten was... years ago, five years five ago. Five years ago. <laughs> I, I keep saying ten. You're right, five. It's five. But it was like ago. run down by like your, um, you know, super local, um, you know, rice and chicken or begales yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, five ten dollar meals type of places. Yeah, yeah. And now you get the scenery. They renovated. They revamped. They're they, doing they an, a super job. Really, really. They're yeah, any one of the nicest initiatives that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, any mean all of the initiatives. What they're doing in Ballet. Great is, touch. Is, is super, super, yeah. super. Because they real because there's a realization that it's a gem. No, and Kaman Ahel Jeddah are are very happy to see these homes restored. Yeah. Um, actually getting life yeah, there like you know themed. yeah yeah and the beautiful homes and projects are being there and there's a lot of um art programs and uh just it's going to be it's going to be really nice if for no other reason people are going back to balad in an area that was i'm sorry but forgotten صح. you know for the longest time who would go to balad صح. now people from all kind of, uh, um, it's the first thing they take anyone who comes to Jeddah to see. Is the ballad? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yani, ana bet ahel mama hnaq. It's so nice. Everyone I know that has a home there is really happy, like their family home. It's yeah. so cool. Attracts all social classes. What I was, what yeah. I was saying. Yeah, you know, it's a melting pot. It is. It is. It's yeah. gorgeous. Amazing. I'm very happy about. Gotta it. put some pictures up of uh, ballad for those people who haven't been to Saudi who want to know what the hell it is we're talking about. Maybe I can even get a before and after. I can send you some really cool photos. There's, Please do. There's really nice stuff. Please do. Yeah, and and if you have anyone in uh, in the Ballad uh, restoration program, you should, uh, you should get some, get them on. Huh? Yeah. 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 Um, Ashraf. Kamil. Yeah. You hear that, Ashraf? <laughs> Ashraf. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I plugged you. <laughs> like when who and the like wanting to get a restaurant? No, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks, no. Basma, for sharing everything you did. Really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I had a great time. Thank you very much. Much, much appreciated. Um, and we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks again. Thank you. Much appreciated.